right, sounds good. Hey everybody, it's Ryan here with Pi Records. I'm here with the Poison Boys, uh, Matt and Steve. How you doing today, guys? Pretty good. How you doing, man? All right. How's it out in Chicago today? A little rainy. It's like rainy and shitty. <laughs> like it's summer's over, man. So it's all shit now. Weather. Yeah. Uh, how how is the uh? the uh quarantine going over there are they is, is it still uh, uh very I mean, off? it depends man because like no one takes it seriously really so everybody's just uh you you pass by in my neighborhood and stuff there's a lot of all the bars have outside patios everybody it's like full all the time right? but uh, i mean i just kind of have been sitting inside and you know he's been going out and uh like enjoying the nature yeah, I think it's gonna be rough. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Once we're indoors, it's opening back up slowly. They're like, because um, the numbers have gone down. I think bars to one. I still don't want to sit inside a bar. Though. I think. Yeah. Uh, so let's start uh, talking about the Poison Boys uh, or Poison Boys. Um, where did you guys get the name and where did you start? Well, um, we got the name from, uh, one of my favorite bands, the riffs. Um, they got a single called poison boys. Um, just thought it was a good name represented what we were trying to go for musically, uh, just rock and roll punk. And, um, we started in 2014. Started it with a good buddy of mine who I had played in various like punk bands with throughout uh, the 2000s and uh, early 2010s, and uh, his name was Mike Lippman. And then he uh, he passed away soon after the band um, started, like within the same year, 2014. We still wrote, a, we still had a bunch of songs we wrote together, so I wanted to uh, still get those out to the world in a, in a way to kind of continue his memory. Um, so a lot of those are on the uh lp the first lp we have so yeah so who would you say your, who would you say your biggest influence yeah. is uh i don't know slaughtering the dogs <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and let me turn this thing off there you go <laughs> i don't know yeah. that might have been <laughs> right up in your ears there so what was the idea behind what was the idea behind Mean Girls? Mean Queen. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, <laughs> mean Girls, Poison Boys, and the Mean Girls. Yeah. We're watching the movie Mean Girls. Yeah, we just got really like excited <laughs> and fired by Mean Girls the movie. <laughs> I uh, uh, actually, I don't know. I, I was just working uh, a random job and uh, uh, it just popped into my head uh, as I was like mopping a floor. It just came into my head. I was like, like the, the rhythm for it. And, and uh, I think I was listening to a lot of the runaways at the time. So that kind of like just came out. I would just like put it together once I got home from work that day and it was there. Awesome. So you had a full length out and now you have your seven inch out that was pressed at third man uh, with Danny from uh, Hobo Wolfman. Tell us a little bit about how that whole process began uh, from the recording all the way up to the release. Well, the recording happened when we were on tour. We were uh, supporting the LP on an East Coast and Canada tour. And um, by the time we got to Philly, we had a day off. So our good buddy, Davis Shubbs, who uh, he played bass in the band Candy Cigarettes, and they had played the night before in Brooklyn with us. And then they played in Philly with us. And then we had a day off and we were staying at this house, the uh, Davis M. Shubbs Cadaver Club, which is a, um, it's a, it's a um, funeral home, like an old one that, is just turned into his house now. So um, he offered to record us. So we just um, cut a couple tracks for it. 
in uh, about a day and a half. And then, I mean, we were playing those two on, on tour anyway, so they were fresh. So the other, uh, Danny had been, um, what's that? Oh, no, yeah. I just said it sounded really good, the, the recording. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. We were we were kind of going for more um, raw power kind of mix rather than uh, the LP is kind of more clean sounding and more, um, I don't know, in your face. But this one's more like, I don't know, tr like, like trying to be lo-fi, four track sounding, you know. Uh, but yeah, Danny hit us up um, on Instagram. He was actually, Hobo Wolfman had been like supporting a lot of our, our posts and stuff. And so um, I just reached out and I was like, hey man, would you be interested in helping release the seven inch with us? And he was like, hell yeah, I'd be totally down. So at the Attic show. Yeah, I think that uh, they came out to the, the gig we played in January, opening for the Attics at House of Blues too. That was pretty cool. Oh, wow. So where were you guys touring before the uh, the quarantine? Uh, was was that was that on uh, when you recorded the seven inch? Uh, was it a national tour? It was uh, so for that tour we went to we went well we did Chicago, um, Detroit, and then we did we went up to Canada, and then <laughs> my van broke down. <laughs> Right away, like the second we got into Canada, we were like, yeah, we made it. Oh, it's sweet. And then it just broke down like literally 10 minutes in. It sucked. But then uh, we rented a van and then carried on and just paid back the rental with all the gig money. So that was cool. Crossed the border three times. That day. Was yeah, we had to get the van <laughs> towed back to Detroit. And uh, yeah, that, that was a whole fucking thing. But uh <laughs> So we had to, we we missed our Toronto gig actually because of that, which sucked. But then we played in Hamilton the next day, and we went up to uh, Ottawa, which was really sick. And then uh, Montreal, Montreal, all the, Montreal, Canada part. Yeah, that was badass. We played Barfly. Yeah, all the Canada gigs were with Joan. Yeah, that was cool. I don't know if you know Jonesy. They're they're really good sleazy rock and roll punk band like us but from canada no 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 but, uh, oh dude definitely worth checking out yeah. jonesy so oh. then uh we went down yeah jonesy from montreal yeah by france right so originally from a couple, a of, couple of them uh, yeah are from france so uh yeah then we went to uh boston and new york and just did the whole East Coast kind of circuit and then came back through and um, yeah, DC, Philly, uh, Pittsburgh, played at this sick tiki bar out there yeah, with uh, the cheats, that was cool. Then, um, yeah, then we came back, we came home. And, uh, but I mean, before then, the year before we did West Coast, the year before that we did um, the Southern United States. So we've been touring for a while, Just trying to get a new record out every year. Just depends on what um, you know, what's possible, what we can manage, really. And if and sometimes it takes a long time for records to be pressed. So, you know, I mean, we wanted our first LP to be out like 2018, but due to like how long shit takes, sometimes it came out 2019, and we got two records out that year. Oh wow! We're currently in the middle of our uh, second LP, which. Again, we were hoping to get out this year, but it takes a little while sometimes for things to come together. So that should be out next year at some point, early next year. Are you uh, are you guys doing a, a lot of writing right now? Or are you recording? What is, what are you doing during the downtime? Yeah, I mean we're we're backed up with with songs, dude. We've got a lot um, a lot of songs. So we, like I said, we're in the middle of recording our second LP. That's another like 12 songs. And then um, we have even begun recording for a third, but we don't know if we're gonna put that on an actual LP here, if that's gonna be. We, we just wanna get this LP out and see what happens, but we got songs uh, for days, man. <laughs> they just keep coming. So, and I mean, you can't really just, if the songs keep coming, 
what are you going to do? You know, you, you can't just like sit on them forever. So we, we've been, we, we got drums down for a few songs already, uh, recorded tracks. So we're going to see what happens. Awesome. Uh, is there anything you want to announce be before we uh, head out? Um, any Anything you want to talk about that's coming up or... Or, uh, uh, we're going to drop a new single in the next, um, it's just going to be a digital single um, for a song called Nothing But Darkness, uh, probably about six weeks or so. Oh, we're great. Just, uh, finishing up some things, but it's a real aggressive song, um, more on the punk side of things. This next album entirely is going to be more on the punk side of our songwriting, so think like um, Out of My Head the song or tear me apart and stuff like that for this next record so yeah it's mostly on that side of things awesome well i want to thank you guys very much for taking the time to talk to me and for being patient with my screw-ups <laughs> uh, no problem uh, dude <laughs> yeah thanks but, ryan I, we appreciate the we'll, uh, have to, we'll have to stop it next time we're in philly oh yeah oh, that'd be that'd be great i i'm totally jonesing for a show right now i have to tell you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> so love I we love the single here, and uh, the packaging looks looks amazing, and uh, you you right guys on. you guys really have something special, and uh, I don't just say that to anybody. Uh, I purpose purposely after I heard the record that uh, Danny sent me, I I immediately sent out uh, a message to you, Matt. Uh, because cool. it's very unique uh, in in light of what's out there right now. Totally, yeah. Well, we're trying to make it sound like as old school as we can with most of our songs. We like we realize that a lot of bands are um, are playing rock and roll. So, I mean, not there there aren't a lot of bands playing rock and roll these days. That's the whole thing. But then, you know, we wanted to make our stuff as as like old school as possible, like true to form, you know, as, as we could, you know, so, so that we could, so when people listen to it, they're not sure if we're a band from now or if we're from back yeah. then, you know, yeah, I think the only, good. the thing, the main thing that sort of separates it would be our recording quality on some of our stuff is kind of more, more uh, up to date, I guess. But other than that, we want our songs to sound like they came from that era, you know, 1970s yeah. sleazy rock and roll that's awesome well i want to thank you oh yeah and uh thanks for your time thanks for the music and uh i hope you guys have a great rest of your day oh yeah, yeah thanks bro too, ryan thanks man yeah appreciate it